specifically uh, in regards to those issues of historicity, the subject of today's debate. But guess what? I will challenge now, now into another debate where we can discuss who is the historical Jesus. The Jesus of the Bible or the Jesus of the Quran? Then we can discuss those facts. And then he brought up issues with salvation. And then I will challenge him again to another debate, because that's not what today is about. We can debate about salvation or have a dialogue about that someday. That would be very fun. And um, he brought up the point about um, I and the Father of One. Go back, we have filmed this, go back and look exactly at all of the arguments I presented and all of the arguments he presented. I never ever presented the argument, I am the father of one. That's, Jesus does not uh, say that he's God in that passage. I agree with that. I never presented that argument. I presented many arguments, but never that one. Uh, I can go through my arguments, but I will do it later. Um, so you're actually attacking Strowman there, Naim. Uh, and at the same time, when you look at this video, Clearly, look at how he took verses out of context, how I put them in context and show that in context Jesus is God. And again, we see unacceptable arguments. All arguments that are based on Jesus being the worst teacher of history, I won't accept those arguments. And for example, the fact that Jesus says, I am the way, well, the truth and the life. Where well, any, any prophet could say that. No, they couldn't. Look at what Jesus says. Most truly, I say to you, this is from John 6, 47. Who, he who believes in me has everlasting life. Jesus again and again to give claims to perform a function of God, namely resurrect the dead and give eternal life. The, no mere Rasul could say any of this. Look at what Jesus says in John 3, 18. He who believes in me is not condemned, but he who does not believe in me, uh, believe is already condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. Jesus doesn't say that salvation comes in the name of God the Father, but in the name of the only Son of God, referring to himself. Jesus makes himself the object of faith, hence he must be God. Um, he brought up the word, can God die? Listen carefully, Jesus died only in his humanity, but his divine soul didn't change. He's being inconsistent because the Quran agrees with me here. When people die according to the Quran, their soul lives on. Read Surah 2, 154. Therefore, Jesus himself could raise his own body from the dead. John 2, 19, John 10, uh, 17. How can he do this? Because he has power over life and death. He, John 5, 21. But this quality, Qualities, raising the dead and giving life, are qualities both the Bible and the Quran, Surah 2267, claims that only God had, has, hence Jesus must be God. And he brought up the point again, why didn't Jesus just say, I'm God worshiping? I refuted this point and I'm uh, it's actually getting tired of it. If Jesus had said, I'm God, he would have identified himself as the Father, which is wrong. And Jesus did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. It's not a good idea going around telling people, I'm God, worship me, if you came to earth to serve people and give your life. It's not a good idea to do such a thing. And the argument goes both ways. He has not shown me a passage where Jesus denied to be God. He was often accused that, that he didn't deny it because he is God. And he's been inconsistent. He can't show me a verse in the Bible or the Quran where Jesus says, I'm the Messiah. He shouldn't believe that Jesus is the Messiah because Jesus never said, I am the Messiah. Oh, about the names of Allah. Okay, let's go through the names of Allah and compare them to Jesus. Allah is called Allah. Jesus is called my Lord and my God, John 20, 28. Allah is called the compassionate, Al-Rahman. Jesus says in Matthew 11, 28, Come to me, all you who are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So Jesus is Al-Rahman. Allah is called the merciful, Al-Rahim, and the forgiver, Al-Kafar. Jesus forgives sins. Uh, so Jesus is Allah there. Allah is called the king, Al-Malik, the ruler of the kingdom, Malik Al-Maluk. Jesus calls himself the king in Matthew 25, 31 and says that he has a heavenly kingdom in John 8, 36. So he's Allah there. Allah is called Al-Muhamini, the overall protector, the strong, Al-Aziz, the preserver, Al-Hafiz, and the giver of life, Al-Muhihi. Jesus says in John 10, 28, I give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. So all these titles have Jesus. Allah is called the Almighty, Al-Jabbar. Jesus says in John 15, 5, uh, 19. Whatever the Father does, the Son does likewise. So Jesus is Almighty. Allah is called the Judge, Al Hakam. Jesus says that He's the Judge, and I've showed that. Allah is called the Glorious, Al Majid. Jesus says in Matthew 25 41 that He's the one who sits on the glorious throne in heaven. 
Allah is called the truth, Al-Haq, the guide, Al-Hadi, the living one, Al-Haya. Jesus says in John 4, 6, I am the truth, the way, and the life. If every Rasul said that, that would be Shurk al-Akbar. Allah is called um, the light, Al-Nur, which is said, Jesus is in John 8, 12, is called the light. Notice, according to, to Tawheed al-Asma wa Sifat, you can never, you can say something is a, a light, but you can never say the light. Because the light, Al-Nur, is a title for God. Jesus called himself Al-Nur. The Allah is called the heir, al barid Jesus calls himself the heir, Mark 12, 6-7. So Jesus clearly identifies himself as God according to the standards of Islam. He brought up John 20, uh, 17 where he says that Jesus has a God. And of course Jesus as a human had a God. But later, I shown Thomas says to the risen Jesus, my Lord and my God. So guess what? Jesus is the same God. Uh, <clears throat> but we see in this passage that Jesus is both man and God, which is precisely what we Christians believe. It is also interesting that Jesus never said our Father, but he says my Father and your Father, showing that Jesus is God's Son by nature, while we are God's children by adoption. He, the, then Jesus said, all must honor me just as they honor the Father. Jesus demands the same honor that God has. And then he put this verse in context, uh, beginning at verse 19 in John 5:19. Jesus says, to whatever the Father does, the Son does likewise. Jesus does whatever God Almighty does. Verse 21, Jesus says, For as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so also the Son gives life to whom He will. Jesus gives life to whom He ever wills. That makes Him God too. Verse 22, Jesus says, The Father judges no one, but has given all the judgment to the Son. So Jesus is the judge of all humanity. He's God. Later in John 6, 15, Jesus says, All the Father has is mine. So Jesus owns everything that exists. So after claiming to have all these attributes that belong to God alone, Jesus says that everyone should honor Him just as they honor the Father. In other words, we should recognize Jesus as our Savior, who is Almighty, who decides everybody's destiny, and who owns everything. So the context teaches us that Jesus is the only one God with the Father in activity, but also honor. So Jesus is God. And the titles Jesus is given in the New Testament are the following. I've gone through this, I go run through them again. He's called, he said that he had, Jesus has all authority in heaven and earth. Jesus is omnipresent. He is worshipped. He shares God's glory and honor. He has the highest name, the authority there exists. He's the object of faith. He calls himself the I am, a title for God. He's the son of man who everyone on earth is going to worship as God. He's the first and the last. That, that's yeah, also man. Oh, okay. I have to stop, stop that. Thank you so much. Bismillah. Wa qul jaa al-haq wa zaaq al-batil inna al-batil akana al-zahuka wa nunazilu min al-Quran ma huwa shifa wa rahmata lil-mu'minin wa la yazid al-zalimina illa al-kasara The translation of what I have recited is that the truth has come from your Lord and let the falsehood perishes, says the Quran in chapter 17, verse 81, 82. Allah has revealed the Quran and it is a mercy and a healing for the believers. For the wrongdoers, it is nothing but loss. Dear brothers, my brothers was trying too hard to put me on the guilty of uh, misquoting, showing something, not proving. I think he was not listening to me. He was writing there, a man cannot do two jobs at the same time in the equal fashion. See, when it comes to giving life, Lazarus, I was showing in the verse in the slide that we Muslims believe Jesus, peace be upon him, he was giving life to the death by God's permission. But what does the Bible say about that passages? You know, men die only once, not twice. So Lazarus, he was giving life by Jesus, says the Bible. What is the statement did Jesus make? Lazarus, Lazarus, wake up thou. And he was praying to God, Jesus. He was praying to God that thy father, you have listened thy prayer. You have listened my prayer. And I want him to be alive because so that the people may believe that thou hast sent me. See, read the full passage. I want him to be alive so that they may receive the glory of God. Not glory of me, that the, all the power has given unto me. What does this mean, the power? Every prophet in their time, they have all superiority on earth to judge people. According to the standard of God. That's why Jesus says, 
think not that I came here to destroy the law of the prophets. I came here not to destroy but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you that except your righteousness that exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees, ye shall in no way will enter the kingdom of heaven. If you preach whatever the commandment I give you and teach men so, ye shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. And I say the Christians have broken all. According to the understanding of Jesus' own statement, you shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. That is what Matthew says, chapter 7, verse 22. On the day of judgment, many will come unto me, saying, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in thy name? In the name of Jesus, they're prophesying. He, he is God, he is God, and I, he is doing this and this and that. And I will confess unto them, says Jesus, in Matthew chapter 7, that ye that works iniquity, you are sinful people. You put me on that position of God, ye that works iniquity, depart from here, I don't even know you. We are the followers of Jesus who believe that he is God Almighty. According to the Bible, they will go to him and he will say, for sake, I don't even know you because you put me on the level of God. Regarding Jesus giving life, as I explained, that thou may believe that God has sent me. That they may believe that this is all yours. All power has given unto me. Now, regarding, you know, the, telling the people, I am the truth and the light. See, this room has light. This room has a light. If we say this is the truth and the light, light is the, everybody can see. What is that is referring to this is the God. For the primitive man, anything in light or in sun, in a moon, in a, in a star, still people are there to believe these are gods. These are gods. But are we going to believe that? Yes, he is the truth and the light, a spiritual light. To reach to God, every messenger is the light. Every messenger. During the time of Daniel, during the time of Isaiah, during the time of Abraham, during the time of Moses, Jesus, Noah, Adam, and the last messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. All of them in their time, they are the truth and the light. That's why the messenger come. People misunderstood in the human history to, you know, the people of Kaf, they make a golden calf by, their, by savings of their own gold. In the Bible we read, so Moses was telling them, why, why thou build this? So he destroyed the house. Why? Showing that people, look, you have seen that all the miracles that God has given me. How is still you are worshiping the cow? Still people are believing that a man can be God. A man, God take the form of a man. He, he put that position. He doesn't understand the human languages. Otherwise, if you avoid science, if you avoid rational things, if you avoid everything, if you only put on the context of certain verses that this is what is referring to, and I am believing only what is telling this. It can apply, it cannot apply, but I believe in this. You can believe what you like. But did Jesus say a single word? Just put in the audience that in this verse, in the Red Letter Bible, or any Bible in the whole world, Jesus says, look, I am your Lord, worship me. If I worship him, what for it? It's my mistake. So Jesus is telling, are you yet without understanding? I am going to my father's place to make a place for you. And you says, God, uh, Lord, show us the way. I am the way. Then again they ask, Lord, show us the father. That is sufficient. The father is in me and I am in father. Come on, man. You can never see God in, in this vision. You can never hear his voice. I am the one who is the spokesman of God. That is what does it mean. And regarding what he says that I didn't say, he didn't say, I am my father of one. My brother, he is quoting, you can go again the videos, John chapter 10 verse 20. What, what does it say? No, my father is greater than I. No man can pluck them out of my hand. No man can pluck them out of my father's hand. And then he says, I am my father of one. This is exactly what he says. I go beyond the verses to explain what does it mean. So Jesus is a, is a judge. Jesus is the light. We believe that. And his time, he is everything. And that's why he was telling in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 16, verse 12 to 14, that I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Because you don't have got the faith, you faithless people. That's what the Jesus says in Matthew. But how big when he, the final messenger, will come, that's what not the he says, I'm putting my word. But that's what literally it means. We refer this prophecy as the prophecy of Mount Islam. That how be it when he, the spirit of truth will come, he will guide you into all truth. He shall not talk for himself. What he hear, he will talk. 
and he will show you the things to come till eternity. And that is the things what Jesus is referring to, that is the Quran and the prophecy of Muhammad peace be upon him. So that is how we live, my dear brothers, criticism and other understanding, we can go, we can go in every references. I was giving you an elaboration about how the rational understanding of people see and what is the Bible says about Jesus. He never claimed. People who took him as a God because they want him to God. But he was what he claimed. He was claimed as a man, a man of God, God and a messenger of God and the Messiah. He says the Messiah. No attribute of God given. Al-Basir, Ar-Rahman. Did Jesus call Ar-Rahman in the Quran or in the Bible? Ar-Rahim, did he, did he show any verses? That he, did Jesus ever called? Did you call Jesus Emmanuel? He will be called Emmanuel. Did you call Jesus Ar-Rahman? Any Christian show me in the world Ar-Rahman. No, he, you, you derive the conclusion from the verses of the Bible you'd like to. Look, he is merciful, so Jesus is forgiving. But God Almighty cannot forgive his own creation and he has to come to sacrifice. Thank you very much. For his Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes, comment. Yep. Sorry, I'm just fixing the timer. You hear me? You hear me? Well, um, he has not yet rebuked my points, and none of my arguments from my opening statements have been even touched to this, to, in, the, in today's debate. And the thing about, uh, <clears throat> uh, I mean, we should not go off topic, he went off topic a little bit again. Um, the, the thing about Muhammad and so forth, well, guess what, Naim? I'm going in front of everyone, challenge you on another debate, if Muhammad is prophesied in the Bible. I challenge you in front of everyone to debate me on that subject. We can take it then. There, I said many, I gave five reasons why Jesus didn't say, I'm God, worship me. He hasn't refuted any of those. And the thing about that is that, why do, do you believe that Jesus is the Messiah? He's not called the Messiah, neither in the Bible or the Quran. Is Jesus, does Jesus say, I am the Messiah? You shouldn't believe that Jesus is Messiah if you're consistent. Now, he said that Jesus prayed for miracles. Uh, of course Jesus prayed for miracles because the foremost purpose of Jesus' miracles was to testify that he is the Christ. But who does the testifying? It is the Father that does. That being the reason why the miracles come from the Father. In John 11:25, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. No miracle could ever say this without it, it being shirk al-Akbar. Then Jesus prays to the Father so that the Father, through miracles, would testify to this fact that Jesus indeed is the object of faith, meaning he is God. The Quran admits that God is the truth and the life giver, al haq Read Surah 22, 67, 23, 116, 30, and 50. So why does God approve with miracles when Jesus claimed to be that which God is? Well, it must be because Jesus is God. Jesus even says in John 6, 29, this is the work of God, that you believe in him who he has sent. God wants everybody here to believe in Jesus. The Father does miracles to prove that Jesus indeed is his son, the object of faith, God himself. He said that God sent Jesus, so what? In the Old Testament, we read several times about Jehovah God sending Jehovah God. Let me just give you a few examples, I have more. Hosea 1.7, but I, this is God speaking, I, Jehovah, will have mercy on the house of Judah, and I will save them by the Lord their God. So Jehovah will send Jehovah to save Judah. Another example, Zechariah 2, 10 to 11. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for behold, I come and I will dwell in your midst, declares the Lord. The word for Lord then is Yahweh, Jehovah. And many nations shall join themselves to the Lord in that day, and they shall be my people, and I will dwell in their midst. And you shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. Jehovah is sending Jehovah. This is a prophecy actually about Jesus Christ. Jesus is Jehovah God that came to us. So we did see that the Old Testament agrees with us Christians, that God is triune, and therefore one member can send another member of the Godhead. 
He brought up Matthew 7, 25, where Jesus rebukes those that call him Lord, Lord. Go and read the text. Jesus does not rebuke them for calling him Lord, Lord, which he should have since such a repetition, Lord, Lord, is used of God in the Greek Old Testament. Deuteronomy 3, 24, 1 Kings 8, 53, Ezekiel 20, 49, and so forth. Jesus is rebuking them for not doing what he says. Read the whole passage. It is evident that Jesus had no trouble, trouble being called Lord, Lord. Listen to what he says in par the parable passage in Luke 6, 46. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not what I tell you? Hence, if you do what Jesus says, you can constant, uh, consistently call him Lord, Lord, a title that is only given to God in the Greek Old Testament. So Jesus is saying that he's God. He brought up, uh, again, the, the, the whole thing about, well, all the prophets was the truth and the light. No, you're committing shirk al-Akbar. Only Allah, according to Islam, is al-Haq. No one can say, people can say, I have the truth, but no one can claim to be the truth. That's a title for Allah alone. You're committing shirk al-Akbar there. And, the, and you must understand, he's claiming that he, Jesus was the worst teacher that has ever existed. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. But, uh, I'm sorry, did you think I meant I'm the resurrection of life? Oh, I meant that I'm showing you the way to the resurrection of life. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, that makes Jesus the worst teacher that ever existed. Jesus says, I am the truth and the life. Jesus says that I'm the resurrection and the life. He claims to be the good shepherd, which only God is. And he even accepts the titles for God. He calls himself the son of man who will be worshipped by the entire world with the highest form of religious worship. No mere Rasul could say these things. He says the thing about judge. Oh, uh, Jesus uh, was appointed judge by God. Look what Jesus said. Jesus says that he's the one that does what God promised he would do. In Ezekiel 34, 17, we read God saying, As you from my flock, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I will judge between one sheep and another, between rams and goats. To Joel 3, 2, I will gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Je Jehoshaphat. And I will enter into judgment with them. Now listen to what Jesus says in Matthew 25, 31 to 34. When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, then He will sit on His glorious throne. Before Him He will gather all the nations and He will separate people one from another as a shepherd, shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. Then the King will say to those on His right, Come. Notice how Jesus describes himself as a heavenly king on a glorious throne with all the angels and that he's the one who will decide everybody's eternal destiny. No mere Rasul could ever say these words. The Quran agrees. Surah 2, 114, 355, 4, 141. Only God is the judge of all mankind. Hence Jesus, when he says that he will gather all the nations and separate the sheep from the ghost, in other words, judging mankind, he's claiming to be God even according to the Quran. The reason why... I would take that later. <clears throat> now, he said, how can Jesus be God if uh, he's the way to God? For us Christians, God is everything. We begin with him and we walk with him in order to come with him. By calling himself the only way, Jesus is saying that he's our only savior from the sin that separates us from God. In the Old Testament, God says that he's our savior in this way. He's himself brought up Isaiah 43, 11, where God says, I, I am the Lord, and besides me there is no savior. Isaiah 45, 24, and there is no God besides me, a righteous God and a savior. There is none beside me. Since only God is our savior and Jesus is our savior, well, guess what? That means Jesus is God. To him belongs all the glory. Now, with the few times I have, my points still remain. Jesus claimed to have all authority on heaven and earth. Jesus claimed to be omnipresent. He accepted worship. He shared God's glory and honor. He has the highest name. He has the highest authority. He's the object of faith. He claims titles for God to himself. He's, he accepts the title, our Lord and God. He forgives sins. He's the judge of all the world. He's all-knowing. He answers prayers. He owns everything and he's almighty. I've shown this. You have not reviewed at any of those points. The, the, the debate topic is, did Jesus consider himself to be God according to the Bible? And it's absolutely clear he did. No miracle could ever say any of these things which Jesus did. Jesus is almighty God and he will come on judgment day. And he's the one who will sit on his glorious throne and decide who comes to the kingdom of God and who doesn't. My Muslim friend, Jesus said that he owns everything. If you're breathing right now without confessing Jesus as your Lord, you're stealing his heir and you will meet him as the ultimate judge of your faith.
Thank you so much. Oh, sorry, thank you. Regarding my brother, which again claiming me, I have not refused. If he do not listen to what I have said, that's, but you can, I would refer to you the videos. Regarding more debates about many subjects that what he has spoken, we Muslims, we have opened the door. You are anytime welcome. Any topic, welcome. Sit us together, have an agenda, and then we will see what are the subjects and what will be the context. Regarding, I say Jesus being the worst teacher, please be honest. If you find any of the talk or any of the word I was referring that Jesus being the worst teacher, if, if this word I have ever used, I would even claim him that for everything, every time, not this time, every time before this statement, if I make Jesus as the worst teacher, I would like to present him any gifts if he likes. But let us see God creating man in his image. God creating man is his image. How the Christians understood is that Jesus is the God. And the man, God is a man. And that's why he put himself in a man, and man is man. See, how you define is the question, but the, the contradiction will be there. God says in the book of Deuteronomy, you read the verse, and the Exodus, twice, that thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt make not unto me any graven image from the heaven above, from the earth beneath, from beneath the water of the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them, not serve them, for I, thy God, thy Lord, is a jealous God. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 7 and 9, Exodus chapter 20, verse 3 to 5. Now how we combine? For you shall not make God into anything that is imageable from the heaven above, from the earth beneath. Now how God man created in his image? In Islam, we would refer to this image of understanding, unfigurable things, not figurizing God, figurizing his, his knowledge, his speech, because God can talk. So he gives the ability, that image to man, to talk, to reflect with his understanding that there is only one creator. There is not two, there is not three. No father, no son, and no Holy Spirit, or ghost or a spook, only one Lord. That's what the Bible preaches. That the God, the Lord, is a jealous God. I am your Lord and there is none beside me. If Jesus is there beside, how you figure? He was telling about God, glory, you will see the glory of God being the Son, yeah, walking on the right hand of God. Walking on the right hand of God. God is too big like this. And his hand is too big. Jesus is walking on the right hand. That's what the figure he says. And he was meaning, is this God? No, this cannot be. God's understanding is there of every human being. And regarding Jesus and the claim that before Abraham was I am, I am the truth and the light, I think I explained some of this, I left some of this so that I could explain. Some of the explicit verses is very clear. Before Abraham was I am, what does it mean? Jesus was born in the womb of mother. But what does that mean then? God says in the Bible, in Jeremiah, God knows Jeremiah before he was in the womb of his mother. God knows Abraham before he created him. How? In the knowledge of God, God knows he's going to create Jesus, he's going to create Daniel, he's going to create Isaiah, he's going to create me. This debate was in the knowledge of God that this is going to happen. But we don't know that, but God knows that. Jesus says, before Abraham was I am, meaning in the knowledge of God was I am. That's what we conclude. It's not there. It's, it's our understanding. Every creation is there in the knowledge of God. Otherwise, he's, he don't have knowledge of what he has created or he, what he is going to create. That's not the meaning. Regarding the resurrection and death and taking sins, my dear brothers, this is going too far. No God come to the earth to take sins. If God is to, he was telling God is so pure, God is so holy, God is so lovely, God is so merciful. He cannot forgive the sin of you and me if we seek forgiveness. Says the Quran, you, you take sincere repentance to God and God forgive. In the book of Ezekiel, in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, verse 20, God says, supposed to be the word of God says, that the soul that sinneth shall die. The Christians, they stop there. Continue the verse. The soul that sinneth shall die. But 
what does the verse continues it says if you turn from if you turn from the sin you shall not die you shall ever live that's what jesus says you will have eternal life once you turn to me meaning you're turning to god meaning you're accepting me as a prophet and you accept that god is one what i have claimed that shama israel la ilaha illa allah here is israel our lord our god is one and listen to this the voice that you are hearing is not from mine but the father who has sent me and in the gospel jesus says even the the one who sent me is not the messenger is not greater than the one who has sent him a prophet is greater than the one who is disciples how can he and god is equal in one in in any form or any thoughts we should not think like that because jesus he was claiming that he is in the authority on earth as a messenger of god to carry the message of god so that the people would believe that there is only one god john chapter 17 verse 3 this is life eternal this is life eternal that do you may believe that the, there is only true god and jesus christ, and jesus christ whom thou hast sent not to take out sin but that is your eternal life you believe on that so regarding the baptism formula what my brother says you know there are two kind of baptism formula we find in the bible matthew chapter 20 as was he was referring but see the early gospel mark he says baptize them by the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit the scholar says even in the mark what the disciple practices mark it says the disciple they went there and they baptized them in the name of jesus jesus says do not break the list of the commandment their understanding was something different than what jesus preached if he was mentioning to to baptize in three names why would the disciple would baptize in the name of only jesus and regarding the other claim god become flesh and god is taking sin my brother use your rational understanding you don't need the the bible or the quran to reflect and understand i was showing you the pre- primitive man believe me if you go there if you want to baptize them you're going to be free from there because they will ask the same question to you is he atma to does he eat and excrete this is not the quality of god messenger is a messenger we muslims we put jesus christ on a higher standard peace be upon him we do not do something what the messengers and the god almighty did not told us to do the quran why in the quran he was asking just one one thing to refer the why in the quran jesus not say i am the messiah because there is a difference between quran and the bible in the bible this is the word of man they are the word of prophet in the quran the word of god god says jesus is my servant and in quran no man speaks is the word of god that's what your understanding is need to develop what is the difference between quran jesus never speak in the quran god speaks and he called jesus when it requires i hope with these little words my dear brothers we will see in the following talk that how in many Thank options very much. jesus Thank is not god so we're coming to the last round before the break which is a five minute conclusion and uh, after that we will have a break and after the break there will be questions and answers and i've been asked to announce that during the break we should stay in the coffee room with the coffee and, and whatever we have as refreshments uh, no we can stay here there's not enough room there yeah okay so five minutes thank you nay um in my closing statement let me just to uh, very quickly say some of the points you said in its last talk about the thing about worst teachers yeah you didn't say that uh, jesus was the worst teacher ever existed but when you say that when jesus says i am the resurrection and life we who believes in me has eternal life come to me all or i will raise the dead and so forth and uh, when you say no jesus didn't actually mean those things he meant something else then you are making jesus the worst teacher that ever existed be consistent and the thing about uh, in Deuteronomy uh, in Exodus God says I am your lord your god there is no god besides me of course there is only one god and his name is Jesus Christ and the, the thing about salvation you brought up again and uh, can god just forgive people you you were talking about well let's have a debate about salvation some other time that will be very fun tonight today's debate is about if jesus considered himself god and he brought you brought up the thing about the bible not being the word of god but the quran is the word of god let's have a debate about that as well that will be very fun today's debate is about if jesus considered himself god i think that he did you said that in john 8:15 jesus was just talking about god's foreknowledge 
Jesus' pre-existence can't be compared to God with God's foreknowledge of earlier prophets. They were just plans in God's mind while Jesus actually existed before coming to earth. This is obvious if we look at the verse in context. Jesus says in verse 23 to 24, You are from below, I am up from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. I told you, you will die in your sins, for unless you believe that I am me, you will die in your sins. Then in verse 42, Jesus says, If God were your father, you would have loved me, for I came from God and I am here. Jesus is not talking about God's foreknowledge. In context, he's comparing his existence with Abraham. Before Abraham was, I am, meaning Abraham was created, but I'm not created. I'm the eternal God. Over and over again, Jesus spoke about his pre-existence. He talked about Jesus as, is at God's right hand. Jesus could not say he's God because that would mean he's the Father. The term right hand is not literal. God doesn't have a literal right hand. God is spirit, John 4, 24. The term means the highest place of authority. The Jews thought that no one can see God's glory and live. Jesus not only says that he has seen God, but that he sits down on God's throne. The Jews never allow anyone to go in the Holy of Holies in God's temple on earth. Jesus not only says that he sits on God's throne in heaven, but he, he even says in Matthew 12, 6, that he's greater than the temple. The very place God's glory is, Jesus says, I'm greater than that. Being more glorious than God's glory on earth and a co-occupant of God's throne in heaven, this is not a mere rasul, this is this divine son of God, the Lord of everything. Now, let me say, just say quickly something. Have we seen any arguments for Jesus not considering himself God? I don't think we have. All of them have been refuted and look, uh, look it up in the video. But we have definitely seen arguments for Jesus considering himself to be God. Jesus is the light of the world. He's the resurrection and the life. He's the great I am. He's the son of man who is, is to be worshipped by the entire world. He's the judge of the world. He's the king of heaven. He's the source of life and the raiser of death. He's the almighty who does whatever the fathers does. He's the object of worship. He's the object of prayer. He's the co-occupant of God's throne. He's the one that has come to he from heaven to save us. He's the forgiver of the sins. He's the first and the last. He's the shepherd that gives eternal life. He's the heir of God's kingdom. He's the owner of everything. He's the one that should be honored as God. He's the Lord of the Sabbath. He's the one that has the name above all names. If you are true to the facts and believe Jesus for who he claimed to be, then we can only fall down on our feet and repeat Thomas' words to Jesus, my Lord and my God. Now where do we go from here? One of the reasons Jesus didn't say, I'm God, this is my sixth reason, is because this fact should not only be an intellectual conviction, but a truth, uh, truth that fills our heart, a truth that only God, God's Spirit can make reality in our lives. Hence, I want to end with a challenge to you Muslims. Uh, once a Muslim came up to me and said, the Quran is much more beautiful than the Bible. There's nothing in the Bible as beautiful as the Quran. I know that many Muslims feel this way, and that's why I want to challenge you. Pick up a New Testament and read the Gospel. If you like, just read two of them, Luke and John, and compare yourself to say, the person and saying so Jesus Christ with the Quran. Don't just read certain parts and stop listening to Muslim apologists who distort its meaning. Take verses out of context and lie to you. I promise. Zaki and Naif, Joseph Esther, Ahmed, they're all a liar. I promise you this. Instead, read it from the beginning to end with an open mind and a heart that is willing to accept God's truth no matter what. And at the same time, pray to God that He should guide you, that He should reveal the truth for you. If you seek the truth with an open heart, I believe that you would find the truth. And if God convinces you that Jesus is the truth, that Jesus is God, then comes the next most important question. What is God doing on a cross? Thank you so much for listening to me. Oh, thank you. Regarding uh, the conclusion of my part, uh, he was referring mer rasul, mer rasul, mer rasul. I, I don't think the Christians they understood the meaning of that word, that phrase, what he was meaning to. He should refer it to Mere Rasul means mere messenger. Rasul in, is an Arabic word, it means messenger. So he was referring, I assume, that Muhammad, peace be upon him, he is just a mere Rasul, that what he brings to the earth, to the Muslims. You see, in mythology, in the Scandinavian especially, we have many mythologies, you know, Norse mythology. The Thor god, the snake god, and the god eating the world. The Hindu mythology is there. The Norse mythology is there, and the Viking mythology is also there. So if you put the Christianity on, this will be another mythology, you know, God being incarnate, like the other mythological figures. He has rightly said, Jesus says, in the Gospel of St. John chapter 8, verse 32, seek the truth, the truth shall make you free. The truth shall make you free, what is truth? So what is the truth? If you want to explain the man is God, man is God, come on man, 
you have lost your mind to understand. So, the Quran, it comes to give an explicit, never mind however much we try to quote the Bible. Uh, that's what the Christians understanding. If they want to put, they want to put Jesus as God, they were trying to find out the meaning and the interpretations. He was claiming about some Muslims being, talking to him, uh, that these are these and this. I don't think there is a Muslim who would say this. Muslims is much more rational to talk to you, like the way we are talking here. I haven't used any filthy, dirty words about your scriptures, neither about your faith, neither about your God. I was presenting what the Bible says that did Jesus ever consider himself or did he say that he is God? Did that is the understanding from the Bible. If that is not, then what is the truth? I was referring that to the Quran. That is the truth because you have lost the faith in this people's man-made religion and man-made scripture. The debate, he proposes me and the Muslims to debate. We say we welcome. Any debate, any subject you like. Not only the subject that he refers to, any other subject he will remind to. Regarding the understanding of Jesus, as so as Sabur, where does in the Bible he says as Sabur? The most patient. Where? No way. Jesus is crying to God, Oh my Father, let this difficulty pass away from me. He is telling He is the God incarnate because now He has to act as a man. This is the Hindu mythology. If you ask a Hindu to convert him, he will say, Come on, man, I don't care. I believe the snake is a God, the monkey is a God, and the dog is a God. What does make any difference to believe Rama and Jesus is a God? It's the same for me. But the Muslims, you understand the Muslims, the Muslims should believe Jesus is God. No, our faith is established. We believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, as one of the mightiest messenger of God. It is not we who put him down. It is you who put him down. By telling that these are his words, he was claiming to be a God. This is not the Muslims who is putting him as a, as a proposition of a liar. As a way he was telling what Jesus was telling. Then everything is lie. Jesus was not telling. This is Mark, Matthew, Luke and John was telling. This is what people was telling, people like him, who believed after 16th century that this is the word of God. And people believe before 16th, 11th, this is the word of God. And the word is there. You can write anything what you like, you can claim what is you like. But we are reflecting on. Jesus says in the Bible, in Matthew chapter 13, verse, seeing they see not, hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. The Quran says the same word, almost the same, not the same. The deaf, the dumb, and the blind, they will never and ever listen to that. What is true? So I wish that may God guide those who seek the guidance. Open up your mind, open up your heart. You know the Bible already. If you want to believe Jesus, believe in Him. But study the Quran with an open heart and mind. And then you ask yourself a rational question. Do you believe in mythology or do you believe in monotheism? Because no monotheistic religion ever believed a man or a God incarnate as a man. That is what, in the end of my talk, I would quote the verse of the Quran, Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 171. Say, O people of the book, <coughs> that do not go to extreme in your religion. Do not say about God anything that is true, except anything that is true. And do not say God is three in one. Do not say Jesus, the Messiah, is God Almighty. Believe in Him and believe in the messengers of all. And you shall be rewarded. The people of the book will be rewarded double than me. If they believe the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and if they believe the Quran. That is the status we Muslims give to the Christian world. Thank you for all the patience here. Thank you very much. Both for you. And now it's time for coffee break. Um, I think we're going to see you here in about 20 minutes from now, which will be about 40 past, is that okay? You will have a chance to sit down and drink. Thank you very much. 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 Thank you very much.